All right, got more details into this Zac Efron uh, incident where the pool where he came close to drowning. But basically uh, what uh, TMZ is saying that he did a dive into the bottom of the pool. He went so deep that he hit the bottom of the pool oh. and ingested water into his lungs. Scary. Uh, and this all went down in Ibiza. But basically, he was swimming with his friends early Saturday morning when he decided to take this dive in. But so much water got into his lungs that he was showing signs of distress and on-site security had to help him out of the water. Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast, Raw Rundown, where we give you the top 10 stories of the week. How do we find out the top 10 stories? I say it every week. It goes by data. It goes by Google search. And last, it goes by our personal opinions. But honestly, the personal opinions is like the most minimal amount of part. It goes by the hype. And it goes what people are clicking on, just like every single major news outlet. My name is Adam Glenn. On the West Coast is Dax Holtz. We are the Hollywood Raw Podcast. We do two episodes a week. Midweek, we usually do an episode with maybe Dax and I just yelling at each other. Sometimes we yell at a guest. Um, and then on the Fridays, we release the Raw Rundown, which is the top 10 stories of the week. Um, if you're new to the podcast, thank you for listening. If you've been listening, thank you for being a listener. And if you're a real listener, you'll give us a review because um, that's the best thing to do to support this podcast. Uh, Dax, I want to get right into something mm -hmm. that's sort of newsworthy but that's not on our top 10 stories of the week. Okay. Oh, oh, you've got um, my interest. Yes. Right. I want to get into Whitney Port is in the news. Whitney Port from <laughs> the Hills. I now, could have expected so many other names before you wanted to talk about Whitney Port before we get into the rundown. I know. I get it. I get it. Um, th again, this story is making some news, but not enough news where it makes our top 10 stories of the week. However, I want to uh, address it while it is topical, while it is in conversation. Um, Whitney Port is saying that she was in the Hamptons, her and her husband, and they saw Jennifer Lopez staging paparazzi photos. Um, okay. Your thoughts on that? Do you think that's accurate? Do you think that's true? And then I'm going to give you my take from my personal experience. And, and yeah. Did they say any more? Was there anything like any other details about what the staged paparazzi photos were? Were they her driving? Were they her at the beach? Were they her house hunting? Did they say what it was? They didn't. Uh, so I own, I'm going to be totally honest with you, Dex. I did only Google. I want you to look up the story as I tell you my opinion rather okay. quick. Um, the, from my experience, and I'm a black belt in this, I'm a third degree black belt. Um, Jennifer Lopez does not set up paparazzi photos. She embraces it. She works with the paparazzi. When I mean she works with the paparazzi, they know where she's at. They're staying outside her place. They're trying to get the photo. She's in the news. She's not a bad person. She understands it's their job. She doesn't make it controversial. She doesn't make it um, dangerous for everyone else involved. So her team, or she might say, hey, listen, guys, I gave you the photo. Get the photo here, and then I'm going to go on my way. And to me, that's not staging a photo. That's working with the paparazzi, saying, hey, guys, I'm, this is not going to work for me all day. Get your photo now. I'll stop and pose for you, and that's it. That's your photo. You know, and she's, I don't think she's calling agencies to say, come shoot her. Uh, I do think there's sometimes people in her camp that might s call and set it up without her noticing. Like if she's mm -hmm. going house hunting and she's with a realtor, I could see a realtor saying, hey, paparazzi or some backward a splash. I'm going to be showing Jennifer Lopez photos, uh, houses, get these photos because it's a news story and they want to be in those photos. But I don't believe Whitney Port, and actually, I think it's surprising that Whitney Port would do like, like a hot take like this, because Whitney Port to me, she doesn't seem like, like she wants the controversy. And why like have smoke with J Lo? Well, here? Whitney Port, first of all, J Lo and Whitney are in a two different kind of levels. There's no way J, J Lo is going to have the time for Whitney Port. But when she puts out a statement that like that, you know, it's kind of like that's sort of uh, invasive. It's sort of like aggressive move. And Whitney Port to me. Dude, she was like the nice Jewish girl on the hills that wasn't supposed to be on the show. She was like, she was like a girl that like was still celebrating her bat mitzvah ten years after. Um, it's she shouldn't be kind of putting out kind of statement. Like I don't know, she seems based on what I'm seeing on social media lately with Whitney Port, 
and I'm not mad at it because everyone's got to eat, but she seems a little thirsty. So here's okay. So I'm reading the story, and I see that she said that she was pretty sure J Lo the other day was riding her bike to get a scoop of ice cream for a paparazzi shot. I'm looking at the photos of her riding her bike, her getting ice cream. Um, the number one thing that stands out to me is that the bike shots are done by the image director, which is a paparazzi agency. The ice cream is done by Baccarat. So right there, I would say it's not a setup because you got two different agencies working it. When you do a setup, you have one agency, one paparazzi working it from start to finish because that makes the most sense. Like you don't want to involve multiple people getting exclusive photos. So right there, I would say it's, I don't think it's an exclusive or a setup. However, I would say, you know, she could utilize the, she knows paparazzi are out there. She decides to go for a bike ride. So not that she's setting up the paparazzi shot, but she is inviting them to take a photo or being okay with it or getting dressed up because she knows, hey, the paparazzi are out there. I might as well look my best. I might as well take this opportunity and get photographed. Do I think that's yes. bad? No, because again, we say it all the time. You got to stay relevant. You got to stay in these paparazzi photos for people to see you and see what you're doing and, and be invested in your life. Um, so I could see that being the case, not necessarily a setup, but a invitation to take photos. Yeah, no, I, um, I agree with you. It, Jen Jennifer Lopez is someone who's not going to hide from the paparazzi. She kind of lives her life, which I respect, you know, she's, she's like, she's just a professional with it. Uh, she doesn't have someone cover her up or, um, block her from the paparazzi. She just kind of does what she does. And the paparazzi is there, they get their photos. Occasionally she might talk to him and say, Hey guys, can you just leave us alone a little bit or give us a break? Um, and just trying to work with him. Sometimes I'm with my children. Can you not shoot? Or I just need some alone time. So get your shots now. Cause I just need a break the afternoon. Um, Still think but yeah, so I just thought it was she like, why go against JLo? That seems so weird to me. Like Whitney Port, why are you, why would you want to piss off JLo and accuse her of doing setup photos? Just Dude, if anybody's like doing setup photos, it's Whitney drama Port. Drama you she, don't want. Yeah. yeah, if anyone's doing setup photos, I could see it's Whitney Port doing it after she had the uh, – she was talking about the her husband being concerned about her weight loss. And then all of a sudden, just coincidentally, a few days later, there's photographers outside shooting her body, trying to like see how skinny she is. And if you see the stuff she's doing, it's just so – like where she's at now. To, like I wouldn't see the direction in her career now than mm -hmm. from what she started. It's just very – it's a hot take and just a weird take and not necessary. And to put that out there is very accusatory. And honestly, she wasn't, in my opinion, I, based on the facts, like you just said, Dax, she's incorrect, far yeah. way incorrect. Yeah. So, but Whitney Port, you're welcome on the Hollywood World podcast. We love to talk to Come you. Come talk about um, it, girl. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's accuse some other people of some crazy stuff too while we're at it. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Let's, <laughs> uh, before we get to the raw rundown, the top 10 stories of the week, we read reviews, Dax. Do you have or reread it for us? I do. All right. This one comes from Jer Melt. Uh, it's five star. It's titled Wonderful Pod. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I do not understand anything less than five stars for Adam and Dax. I listen during my Saturday morning workouts, and I look forward to the good energy, and they, and they have a personality. I love the banter, and do not... And not many other pods can make me laugh out loud like this one. Thank you for the content. Thank you for this review. Damn. That you know, was. I feel like I, I wish that, you know what we should do? We should just post these on our like IG or something. Like when there's a really good review like this one, I feel like I should post it because I want yeah. the world to see it. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, that was a really great review and very appreciative. Thank you so much. And that's the best thing to do support this podcast five stars in a review on whatever platform you're listening to. And it's very easy. It takes two seconds. If you've already done it, have fun, take your partners and put a code name. I don't care. Put butthead as the name. I don't care. Just had fun with this. Give us a review and uh, we will appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Dax, let's get to the raw rundown, the top 10 stories of the week, starting with number 10. Michael Jordan's son, Marcus Jordan out sniffing some, White powder and photos being taken of him, and this is making all the rounds online. So Marcus Jordan is uh, in the south of France, and he's out there with his new girlfriend, and there are some photos of him poolside, and it's getting a lot of attention because you see him with this little tiny little metal spoon or scooper, and he's scooping up a white powder, and he is sniffing it up his nose, 
uh, the article is actually really funny, the Daily Mail, because they put up all these photos and the, the way they report about it is like, he has a mysterious white powder. We do not know what the white powder is. We cannot speculate what the white powder is, but there is some white powder and we have reached out to his, to his, uh, his people to get a response. I mean, I'll tell you what it looks like, even though I don't want to accuse him of doing anything. So maybe we won't also say what we think it is. Um, but uh, yeah, you can go check out the photos yourself. Um, and it's funny, all, all of his friends around him, no one's paying attention. He's just over there sniffing up his... Feeding his uh, nose. Feeding his nose with the, some white powder, mysterious white powder, um, while the rest of them are just chatting, having a good time. Yeah, it's... Um... We can't say exactly what it is because we're not there, but I, I, it's hard to disguise that, I think. It's hard yeah. to uh, say he was doing something other than that. With that the crazy, said... The crazy twist in this whole thing was that Larsa Pippen took these photos. No. I'm just kidding. I'm no, kidding. I, <laughs> well, it's funny because the girl he's dating now looks exactly like Larsa Pippen. Yeah. Um. I, again, Marcus Jordan, one of these guys. He's one of those guys. You wonder what he does to make money, um, besides just being Michael Jordan's son. Then you wonder when Michael sees these photos, the fa- the father, uh, the the famous basketball player. Um, does he? I think he says, reach- "You idiot! Like, if you're gonna do this crap, do it behind closed doors. Don't do it out on a public patio where people can see you and take photos of you." That's yeah. what he's gonna say to him. Like. You live your life. Just don't be dumb about how you live your life. Do you think he cuts them off? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he technically still gives him money. I have no idea. I just wonder how that life works. Like, do you just have a credit? Do you just live your life? Or your father says, just do whatever you want. Here's the credit card. Just, you know, don't go too crazy. I just don't, I don't, I wonder what the agreement is. Because how does he make money? I don't, I don't think we ever, like, really I, I have heard to say that. His lunch looks delicious, by the way. He's got a bowl of fries. He's got, it looks like a, maybe a glass of wine or champagne or something. He's got, uh, what is that? A bunch of fruit, watermelon, and then a little nose candy. It's like, hey, one Dax, lunch. Let, me tell you, let me tell you something. And I only know this from <laughs> here. Yeah, he's got the nose candy as dessert. Here's the, here's the issue, Dax. And I only know this uh, from what people tell me. When you do Coke, if you are doing Coke, you don't have an appetite. Not that we're saying that this is Coke. We're saying yeah. that, you know, on another, if someone else was to do Coke, okay, keep going. Yeah, but when you do Coke, you don't have an appetite. So all that food looks great. He doesn't even have an appetite for it. He can't eat it because Coke takes away your, your appetite. If he was doing something like that, but we don't if know. If he was doing that mysterious white powder. Um, it's the same thing. Like if someone's like smoking a joint, you can't really say they're smoking weed. It's tobacco, like smoking a mysterious brown a cigar. Hand rolled, a hand rolled cigarette is what they always say. Yeah. Uh, but it sucks to get caught. And a guy like that, here's the thing, a guy like that who potentially would be an influencer and yeah. looking for brands that hurts them getting influencers, Big time. like Big some brand time. partnerships. So yeah, cause now no marijuana company is going to want to sponsor him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, all right, Dax, number nine. Uh, Kanye West, his ex-chief of staff, Milo, is claiming that uh, Yee's dentist sold him nitrous oxide. Uh, you know, it's obviously a gas, the laughing gas, the gas that uh, can make you super high. Uh, but his former chief of staff is claiming he actually went above and beyond and uh, went to the California Dental Board claiming that his dentist would provide him with this oxide for recreational use, which is a huge no-no. And especially being a dentist, this is you providing something that shouldn't ever leave your office to someone just because they're rich and famous. So this is a really, really bad look for the dentist. The dentist's name is Thomas Connolly, Dr. Thomas Connolly. Um, And uh, I guess uh, Milo, which is his former chief of staff, is saying that this dentist would take upwards of $50,000 every month um, and then give the gas to Yi. And basically, uh, Kanye would you'd do it on his own time, like have an inhaler, an inhaler mask, and just kind of suck in this gas. And it would lead to his mood being unpredictable. And this is all according to, to Milo here. 
Um, and the doctor is denying it, though. The doctor, the doctor is denying it. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, but Yeezy's employees would uh, apparently saw himself administering, according to him, um, and that there was maybe no regulator, which is also kind of crazy. Like there's, you know, your body can only take so much of the gas and you should be regulating it so that you're not getting too much of the gas. I mean, that's why you go to a professional office to have this administered because you're not supposed to do it yourself. Um, and, but Connolly is firing back. He is telling, um, outlets through his spokesperson that he is denying all the allegations against him, calling this narrative, not only factually incorrect, but also intentionally misleading. Um, and that this guy is claiming that, um, Milo is only wanting it for attention and that it's going to just ruin this guy's reputation in the process. So, uh, I mean, you look back at, some of the wild stuff Kanye has said over the years, and you start to think, hmm, that kind of does match up with someone who could be high as a kite on, uh, you know, a nitrous or a gas because inhaling and huffing, that, that stuff messes your brain up real yeah, bad. Yeah, I mean, but the other way is saying Milo has been very outspoken about a few things. So, I, you know, there's there's the doctor side. There's Milo's side. I don't know what to believe. We can only tell you what's going on right now. Milo is making these claims. The doctor saying that's not true. How this ends, I don't know. I mean, does the doctor now sue Milo for making claims like this? How does I this- think it, he would have to, right? Like you, his whole practice could go crumbling if this is not a true story. His whole practice will crumble. If it is a true story, this guy shouldn't be a dentist. Is what it comes down to. By the yeah. way, when you look at him, he looks more like he could be like a dope tattoo artist than a dentist. <laughs> Did you see the photos of him? I saw the photos of him. He's worked with other celebrities before, um, but again, this is something where you lose your license, your yeah. your you yeah, know for everything. Yeah. So this is, because if you think about it, this is the kind of crap that killed Michael Jackson. Exactly, uh, a doctor allowing a patient to self-administer to not have regulations like this kills celebrities because they think they can do whatever they want because they got the money. No, 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 no. This is not safe. Yeah. Uh, Dax number eight. Uh, There is going to be a new film called Killing Gawker all about Hulk Hogan's infamous fight with the massive massive website called Gawker over the release of his sex tape. And it is all going to be through the production company that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck uh, are a part of or that they own. So this will be a film about the infamous legal battle between Gawker and and Hulk Hogan. If you remember, this was a huge, huge story. Back in like 2016, Hulk Hogan won $140 million judgment against Gawker Media and its founder, Nick Denton, and uh, one of its editors. And the, ver- the verdict was a result of a lawsuit over them public or public uh, publishing, sorry, a sex tape featuring Hogan, and it was um, he was having sex with Bubba the Love Sponge's wife at the yeah. time, and this video was, I, I'm telling you, massive. If you don't remember it, this story was so huge. So um, yeah, Dex, uh, break down the story. So break down. You were you were working at TMZ yeah. at the time, and this was a huge, huge story. There was a video of Hulk Hogan having sex. He was Hulk Hogan was going through a difficult time. Bubba Love Sponge, who's his friend. His best friend, his right? Best friend. Bubba. Bubba says, Hey, you can have sex with my wife. Yep. You know? So and Hulk does that and he's he's secretly filmed by Bubba, correct? Correct. And then, and then what happened? How's that video get out? Did Bubba release it or I do don't you- I don't remember the specifics because it was okay. so long ago. Um, but I remember Hulk was like just destroyed by this whole video coming out super embarrassed um and he went right after gawker because it was kind of crazy that they even published the sex tape like it was all over the place uh, of him having sex with her and then he yeah he went after but the crazy part was the the whole lawsuit was funded by this um by this like really really rich guy Uh, let me see if i can find his name uh, let's see. I'm trying to find his name. It was like funded by this rich guy who was already Peter pissed Tool. off at Gawker. Peter Tool? Yeah, there we go. He was already pissed off at Gawker because Gawker had um, outed him as being gay, and so he was the one that was like, "I'm going to put my money behind this. This website doesn't deserve to be around." So this is the moment, and because of the lawsuit, 
They lost a ton of money, ended up having to shut down the website because it was such a big lawsuit for them. It came back for like a year and then went away. But this was the end of Gawker. This was a terrible, terrible misstep by them to post this video. And it essentially ruined the website. I wonder what happened to the guy who um, who was the CEO of Gawker. You know, again, Nick? well, yeah, know. whatever happened to him? Like, we're getting How did that really? I that up? no idea. No idea. Uh, no, the guy's name was Peter Thiel. That was Peter the guy Thiel. I Peter Thiel. Well, Peter Thiel. He yeah. was a billionaire. He was a co-founder of PayPal uh, and was a f- f- uh, former Facebook board member. I think he paid $10 million to help finance lawsuits against Gawker, uh, including like the Hulk Hogan lawsuit. So but I, I would say like that, that was, I mean, outing people, posting sex tapes, like this website needed to be killed off, honestly. It, it was, it went too far back. And that was back in a time where things were a little more loose and you could get away with posting a lot more. They were doing the stuff that no one else would post because this is what happens. You yeah. can't out someone, you can't show sex tapes, you can't do that kind of stuff. And that whole story ended with a settlement. It was like a $31 million settlement. Um, but Ben Affleck is going to play Hulk Hogan, correct? Potentially. Potentially. I don't think that that has been announced that he will play him, but him and Matt Damon are partnering up because they've got their artist equity production company. And that's going to be the production company behind this film. They they bought the rights for it. I don't feel like Ben Affleck would be the best person to play Hulk. Call me crazy. Um, I think you need a bigger, bulkier actor to play him to really get the Hulk essence of it. Um, but I, I could see them doing a good job with this film. Yeah. They do uh, a good job with all their films, honestly. Yeah. Listen, I think just... Uh borderline i think they pick topics people care about or think that's yeah. gonna be better like the movie air the michael jordan story did you see that one i didn't see it but i heard it's amazing i actually didn't like it you know it's one didn't. of those movies I, I thought it was fine what i mean fine is because i loved like the idea of it but it wasn't executed amazing um so it was just do you fine. think that's because they never got to the part where his son was sniffing stuff up his nose <laughs> yeah yeah that could be true <laughs> and it, you got to keep the movie. It's a never-ending movie. Um, but I, I thought that movie was fine. It wasn't great. Um, but again, you're just interested more in the story of like how Michael Jordan became like the face of like jo- you know Nike and Jordan. But this one, the same thing. It is an interesting story. Um, if Ben Affleck plays Hulk Hogan, I don't know that that's going to be a hard sell for me. Uh, but. Nonetheless, it's. Uh, I think the movie, I, the idea of the movie, it's going to bring in a lot of viewers because people are interested in that story. Dax number seven. Uh, Colin Farrell opening up, talking about his life and his son who uh, suffers from a rare disease, a rare genetic disorder called Engelman syndrome. Uh, Colin Farrell has historically been very, very private about his 20-year-old son and uh, and what he goes through. But basically... His son is now 20 years old. It has special needs due to Engelman syndrome. Uh, but he was born with this neurological disorder, which causes de- de- developmental delays, impaired balance, and uh, a lot of other issues. In his son's case, he's nonverbal and requires the help of a, a living caregiver to accomplish day-to-day tasks. But Colin is now opening up. He, he was talking with People Magazine. And he says, you know, I just want the world to be kind to James. I want the world to treat him with kindness and respect. Um, and he is also starting up a um, a foundation, basically to raise money, awareness for people that are living with disabilities. Because he's like, uh, ab- apparently, what happens is that, and but it's going to be called the Colin Farrell Foundation, is that when people with special needs turn twenty one, they become ineligible for certain aid that was previously available to them. And he said, once your tra- child turns twenty one, they're kind of on their own, and then less than. Um, and his son is less than two months away from that milestone age. He said all the safeguards that are put in place, special ed classes, all of that goes away. So you're left with a young adult who should be an, an integrated part of our modern society. And more often than not, they're left behind. And so he's like, I want the world to know, like, this happens. And just because they're 21 and they still have needs, they shouldn't just be kind of cast aside. And because his son is nonverbal, he's like, you know, I, 
I didn't know if I should be talking about this or make him the face of this foundation. But he's like, my son is so sweet and kind that I feel like if he could speak, he would say, absolutely, dad, I want you to go out, raise awareness and help be that champion for for people with special needs. So I think it's a really like sweet story. Super sweet story. You don't see Colin Farrell in the news a lot. So for him yeah. to kind of come forward about this story that I think people even knew he had a son going through this condition. Um, I think I mentioned it once when the, the kid was like four years old, but that's literally it. And since then, because I remember him talking about his son was either going to be four or four and that his son was just started walking. And, you know, for, for most children, they're starting to walk right around the year mark. So clearly he was delayed and that was kind of like the first, hey, my son um, has a disability. And that was, and then I don't think I've heard him really talk about him since. Super sweet story. It's good for him to kind of like, kind of make something like this vocal because I, who knew that a guy like him was going through it and just like, I think he's he's like, I don't want there to be, yeah. yeah, he's like, I don't want there to be shame or embarrassment, like, for, for other parents that are out there, I want people to feel like this is normal. This is okay. It's good to talk about it. It's good to put it out there so that people feel like they have somewhere to go or people to talk to about what, what they're going on and what's going on Dude, in their life. Flawless announcement, flawless execution. Good on him. Great job, uh, Colin Farrell. Dax number six. Uh, Justin Timberlake finding out about more details from his DUI arrest, um, finding out that he had a vape pen, a Rolex, and 300 and six dollars in his pocket during the arrest. Uh, basically, there's just a lot more details that have been kind of popping up about um, everything because he is now having to go to court and he had to face a judge who is suspending his driving privileges in New York. Uh, but basically, his arrest back in June, um, they basically said that look, we we're finding out that he had to do the like field sobriety tests and how bad he actually failed them. According to the report, he was in the car alone um, and was observed to have bloodshot, glassy eyes, odor of alcoholic beverage emanating from his breath, the inability to divide attention, unsteady on his feet, um, and that uh, when he was was unable to focus on speaking while looking for a vehicle registration, um, claimed that he had only had one martini when he was following his friends home, but refused to take a breathalyzer test, not once, but multiple times. Um, he didn't want to do it there while they were on the street. Also didn't want to do it back when they got to the precinct. Um, he was, he failed his, you know, like walking on the line. Basically the test requires a person to take nine steps in a straight line, each time placing the heel directly in front of the toe, then turning and repeating the process. And he failed it miserably. He was very unbalanced and quote unquote, unable to follow instructions correctly. Um, and that it was really him refusing to do the chemical test, which kind of pissed off the judge in this case. And that's why the judge removed his driving privileges in New York, because they're like, nope, if you if you keep refusing to take tests, then clearly there is an issue. Um, I guess also they found yeah, he had a gold ring as one of his possessions. I'm assuming that's his wedding ring. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's like this story doesn't seem to go away for him. He keeps trying to like distance himself and uh, it's not going away. I almost wonder if it's just easier to just say, you know what, plead, you know, guilty, get the uh, six months, you know, just go with it and just say, I'm sorry. I screwed up. I had a drink. I literally had one drink, but I, but to go through all this again, I don't know how this story ends. Here's the thing that I think, really also pissed off the judge. So in the hearing, he pled not guilty to the charges, which is totally normal. That's what most people do, right? Uh, And and the judge ended up suspending his driver privileges for two months, citing his refusal, like I said. But his attorney withdrew his uh, original motion to dismiss the case, and the judge basically raked him over the coals because of comments he made previous to the court hearing. before the court hearing, the lawyer said he was not intoxicated, and the judge was pissed about that. Said that is just irresponsible. To like, you know, he was intoxicated. You know, he made a dumb move, but to go out and try to sway public opinion by saying he was not intoxicated when all signs point to the dude was drunk off his his ass. You know that that was. I think you don't want to piss off a judge, especially no. when. 
<laughs> when they have uh, your client's ha- life in their hands, essentially. I, I have to imagine the Hamptons, you know, the whole district, they don't want to look like, oh, a celebrity getting off either. Yeah. So this is yeah. going to be a back and forth. I almost wonder if they just kind of, Tim Blake's camp, his team, his legal team kind of is trying to do too much, too much magic. And they're like, just stop, just stop. We're not going to be embarrassed by you. Own up to it and, and just take what your punishment is and move on. Like that's the best thing to do at this point. You're not getting out of it. All the details have come out. Just, I was a dumbass. I made a really dumb move. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, I hope you guys forgive me. Uh, He does have a, I guess, go ahead. No, I was just saying the with the whole story was saying someone at the bar. There's there's the rumors that someone at the the bar, the hotel they were at, called the police and said, "Hey, you should watch this car." There's so many different holes at this story, which I don't know what the truth is. However, I will say the police doesn't want to seem like they did a bad job on this, so they're gonna yeah. do their job, their due diligence, their due diligence as as much as possible. Yeah, and so he, I guess, he's gonna be rearranged for another hearing. Uh, today, so Friday, uh, so we won't have any of those details because clearly this is getting released in the morning. Uh, but there should be another. I don't. I don't think he's expected to attend. I think it'll be virtual, if anything. Uh, Dax number five. Emily Radzikowski seen out with another man, someone who is becoming extremely famous uh, on this planet. Shabuzi, our boy Shabuzi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who we brought? We brought you his name a long time ago, uh, before the summer. We said this guy's going to be a big star. He's coming in hot. Uh, but her and Shabuzi were seen uh, packing on some PDA at uh, a hot spot in New York City on Tuesday night. Uh, so basically, her and him walked into Music and Nightclub. I, is this a hot spot? I've never heard of. I'm that. not really familiar with that spot, but yet again, the, the, like the nightlife in New York City, I don't really. It also turns anymore. around so fast. Yeah, there's not really the the turnaround is so quick, and also no one really goes out at night in New York City anymore. Yeah, it sounds weird to say, but like there's not like a nightlife. Um, but and the people that go, wow. it's like like European. Well, they showed up together to Remo's music album release party, and uh, they were holding hands when they walked in the front door, and then they kind of spent the rest of the evening hand in hand off to the side, not really trying to be seen by everyone, at least according to the source that was talking to um, page six. Man, it, it's crazy how she always dates these like famous or upcoming famous people. Like She, she works it. She knows she what she's knows, doing. She knows what to do. and She knows what she's she, doing. I know. And I always say like, how does she meet these people? But they were both at uh, the white party. Uh, over what was that memorial day yeah uh michael rubin's white party and they were both there so potentially they met there and hit it off and next thing you know they're holding hands walking into this album release party together she knows what she's doing i mean if you look at her dating history i mean the past people she's dated in the last since she got divorced from her ex-husband the guy sebastian guy she's rumored to be dated brad pitt pete davidson eric andre um Harry Styles or something? Harry Styles. I mean, that was like a quick one where there was like, she was like kissing Harry Styles. Uh, it, it, like, it was just, I think it might have been like a one night thing. So tell me, I mean, tell me one story that we have covered about Emily Rodgers that has nothing to do with her dating life. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. We have <laughs> covered one single story about her other than dating. Like, that is her beat. I'll give her credit though. She's been around for a while now. Mm-hmm. And, and this, I know this is going to sound very douchey, but she still looks great. And I don't say like she, where'd she go? But like, she still like body looks wise. Like she looks she's incredible. A model. Yeah. That's like, she's a model, days. but you know, what's so funny Dax. So I talked to the paparazzi that like work on her all the time and mm-hmm. they've spoken to her a few times. Not going to say their setups, but um, there is occasionally she lets them know where she's going to be. Um, but I go, do you guys ever see her go to a gym, the, the gym? And they never see her getting, they never get her going into a gym. Hmm. You, Isn't that you, weird? Maybe she's got one like in her apartment building or whatever. I mean, I don't, what is that? It can't be a great gym. What do you have? Just a treadmill? What does she just work out at home in her bedroom? She just oh, looks fantastic. Maybe her trainer shows up to her personal apartment gym building and does it there. 
I'd be well. Then that's something we have to investigate. Does Emily actually work out, or does she Did have she a, a gym in her the building? weekend for a hot minute or something? No, it was, it was Eric Andre. That's what Eric I'm Andre. About. Yeah, they look. They actually, they look very much alike. Not very much, but they kind of go alike. But she looks incredible. She knows how to work the scene. Um, yeah, and she obviously knows Shibuzi is the hot star right now. Um, we called it out like, hey, song of the summer before the summer like yeah this thing is going to be a hit and sure enough we're but, still playing it and we still like this song it's still a great dude, song the song is so good it i've introduced so good. everyone i know to it i'm like this is the best song yeah so catchy <laughs> uh, dax number four uh nelly arrested at a casino on charges of drug possession and failing to obtain insurance and then it actually got worse than that uh but he was arrested wednesday morning in maryland heights basically he was leaving a hollywood Casino, that's the name of the casino, in Maryland Heights near St. Louis around 4.45 a.m. on Wednesday when he was stopped for ID verification by Missouri Gaming Commission. Um, And then he was arrested for a previous warrant he had under his name for failure to obtain car insurance. Well, here's where it got worse. Upon searching Nellie's car, the Missouri State Highway officers discovered ecstasy pills, leading them to charge him for drug possession and was transported to Maryland Heights Police Department, and he was ultimately released. Uh, but this is not looking good. He was he was doing really well. I mean, he's been traveling the country, being the supporting act for Janet Jackson's ninth concert tour. Uh, I mean, he has been doing really well. And then to top this off, I mean, his last performance was July 30th in Phoenix. And uh, uh, so things were on the up and up. This does not bode well for him. However... Um, I, I'm sure that, I mean, it's Nelly. It's not like this is going to be career crushing for him by any means. No, um, no. I'm actually a little surprised by Nelly. When Nelly first came out with country grammar and everything that was going on, I didn't think that his career would sort of take a, I didn't think it was going to quiet so quick. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like he still tours, still does well, but I thought he was going to have, and not saying he doesn't have longevity, and yeah. not like saying he doesn't like he's done some like, country music kind of collaborations. I was say, the country stuff, the collabs he did with country were awful. No, they're a, they're awful or great. No, awesome. He, when he teamed up and did the like, what was it? Part of Georgia Line. Yeah, song yeah. Was good. It was that a was great a song, but he just like kind of went off like the map a little bit, which is weird because he had some of the biggest songs on the planet, like his. What was it? Country, country grammar. Country grammar was his first song. That album. If you oh want to take a ride God. with me, I mean, those so were like, good. Those were songs of the. I think "Ride with Me" was maybe a song of the summer at some point. I, I think it was released during the summer. Like but you can go back and listen to the album. Like every song is so good. <laughs> but is it crazy how quick like he just kind of like went away? Mm-hmm. And I was like, he had he was more he wasn't a one hit wonder by uh, he wasn't a one hit wonder by any means. Uh, but then he just kind of like, I'm going to do private gigs and maybe he just went the private gig route and just is like, I don't need to kind of play the game. I'll just do private gigs, get paid a good amount of money tour when I want. And yeah, I mean, obviously this was an arrest for him. His lawyers are sort of fighting and arguing saying he was a target, um, saying that he kind of, you know, they shouldn't have even looked into him that much. He just won some money and they should have just handed him a check, but yeah. shitty situation. I don't think it's going to affect him too much. Um, I think it's just going to, be a new story and topical for like a week. I mean, who got busted for ecstasy not too long ago? Hootie. Hootie and the Darius Rucker got busted for having some sort of uh, – mu- I think he had mushrooms on doing, him. Doing country songs now, you know, they just they start going uh, to the ecstasy route. <laughs> who knew? Everyone who does country <laughs> listens to techno music late at night and just fucking does their own thing. <laughs> um, but, you know, whatever. It is it is what it is. Dax number three. Number three. All right, got more details into this Zach Efron uh, incident where the pool where he came close to drowning. But basically, uh, what uh, TMZ is saying that he did a dive into the bottom of the pool. He went so deep that he hit the bottom of the pool oh. and ingested water into his lungs. Scary. Uh, and this all went down in Ibiza. But basically, he was swimming with his friends early Saturday morning when he decided to take this dive in. But so much water got into his lungs that he was showing signs of distress and on-site security had to help him out of the water. Uh, they, one source told TMZ that it was momentarily dazed and was taken to the hospital as a precautionary measure. And during that visit, 
they did chest x-ray to confirm that the water was gone from his lungs and that he was cleared to release within a few hours. But uh, TMZ is saying that he remained at the hospital because there was a ton of photogs outside who had gotten word that he was there. So he just kind of wanted to lay low for a little bit. Um, he did already post a photo of himself working out the next day. Um, and then he was right back to his normal schedule after um, after the little bit of a hospital stay. Um, and I think he's already re- returned to the United States. I, I think I saw a video of him getting off his private jet or a private jet, not his, a private jet. And he was in a mask, in a hood, sunglasses, like trying to keep really low profile after the incident. Scary. That's yeah. a scary situation. Hitting the bottom. I mean, it, have you ever hit the bottom of a pool diving or like kind of felt that? I mean, or? I hit my head before. I mean, it didn't knock me out or anything. But I, I dove in before and it was just went too much, hit my head, did not feel good. But ingesting the water is a, it's a really scary part. That's like choking on water pretty much, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Scary situation. I think he released the photo timely just to kind of clear the air right after. Um, sort He's got of like, a hey, lot okay. of issues. For someone who is kind of out of the spotlight most of the time, he's had a lot of uh, do you remember his Health whole? Issues. Yeah. Do you remember the whole like drug issues and? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's. But you know what's so weird? He. He's one of these guys where I think, quietly, and I'm saying this allegedly, mm-hmm. he's one of these actors like Leonardo DiCaprio that's being funded by rich people. What I mean, what I mean is like he finds these people that are like super loaded, and they say, "Hey, why don't you come on vacation?" And there's like a boat full of women and. He brings like a buddy with him and they have like this crazy week, like, or it's like a trip where he doesn't have to pay a dime and just like the like, billionaire gets to kind of hang out with him for a little bit. How does, how does one find a billionaire friend like that? Get successful for, I mean, dude, money finds I, money and they don't want anything to do with us. And it's funny. <laughs> I, you know, what's so funny, Dax. I was texting. <laughs> oh my God. I was actually texting with a billionaire yesterday. And I don't want to say his name. I don't say what he does or how he made his money. But he's like, he's like the he's a billionaire. But is, he's okay. like not necessarily. It's the father who's a billionaire. So would you say he's a billionaire too? Even though he works, uh, for his I would father? say he's the son of a billionaire. Is what he's I the son say, of a billionaire. Until the day that that money gets transferred over to him, he's not a billionaire. Well, okay, he, I did. He has like a. Like maybe like a double digit, like maybe like a ten million dollar home right now. But mm-hmm. so he's the son of a billionaire, and we're texting back and forth. He's like, "Yeah, I, I spend my summers in Canada at this lake," and I was like, "Oh, that's crazy." And he's like, "Yeah, you should come up next summer." I'm like, "See, uh... you found yourself a billionaire friend. <laughs> God damn, it. fuck you, dude. You don't understand some. I won't go." Because I'd be like, hey, would you cover the flight? And then they just like, then they lose me. They're like, dude, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? Now you're being too poor for us. Um, so yeah, but the, I, I mean, I, it was like one of those like, ass where it's like weird where he knows I wouldn't accept it. Imagine yeah. him, they're like, yeah, okay, sure. I'll be there. How about June 13th next year? And they're like, oh, never mind. Uh, I'm away that weekend. They, it wasn't like a real ask, but oh. yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, all right, Dex, number two. Whoopi Goldberg upset over her toilets. Oh, uh, well, kind of. <laughs> so basically, uh, we, we brought you this story midweek, and it has now even got a, to be a bigger story. But Whoopi Goldberg is furious over her new view dressing room without a bathroom is and quote unquote refusing to to use it. Uh, basically, the you know she's been with the view for seventeen years, and if she is the main uh, person on the view, and they just moved their ABC studios to downtown New York, and in the process. She had a massive dressing room when it was uptown. Uh, she apparently had like a full table in there. She had a bathroom, a shower, the whole works. But she had so much room that she would have all the women come into her room in the morning to do the morning meetings, to talk before the show started. And now she's got a tiny little dressing room because they have no space at this new place. Um, and there's not even like anything in there. And um, she's pissed about it, according to one source. And uh, and she is now planning to move her production company down next door to the the offices there for ABC and so that she could potentially use the, the dressing room, the bathroom in her production company before going to ABC because it's like unacceptable how small this dressing room is for her. Yeah, I mean, she's a big deal there. I think she wants to be treated with a little bit more respect. And 
it, Dax, if you were a celebrity like that, would you want your personal? Would would that be a game changer for you? Uh, yeah, because listen, at the end of the day, you know, you want to feel comfortable in, and especially before you're doing a big TV show, you want to feel comfortable. You got to take a dump rooney like you want to do it in the privacy of your, your dressing room rather than out there with PAs and interns and everyone else. Like, I'm sorry. I think she deserves to have some privacy. Yeah, well, it's funny. I was just at The View recently. Well, they're no longer at the location. They just left the location that they were currently filming at. They're moving downtown, but they were uptown. Um, But I was there with a guest, and the two dressing rooms for the guests are right next to each other. And they have to share like a one-stall bath. It's actually they have to share like a handicapped bathroom. It's not a nice bathroom. So it's sort of like uncomfortable. You know, figure like – if you go to the show, you're a celebrity, you go with four guests, you know, four people with you. And then the other guest has like three people with them. That's like nine or 10 people kind of sharing one bathroom. That's not a nice bathroom. So it's like, there is some sort of weirdness of the whole thing. You know, yeah, if you're, it, especially if you're a big star, like, well, and if you are the star of that show, you know, like you are the one person that deserves to have your private space. Exactly. Like, do you know how upset Whoopi must be if she has to share a bathroom and she has to take a dump and she has to leave the toilet, like she leaves the bathroom right away and someone else is waiting to go in and then they're going to smell the bathroom after? Like, does she have to wait in the toilet for a little bit so the air kind of clears around a little bit? <laughs> you know, it's like those little things that kind of like go in your head. Of course. I mean, a normal person feels that way, <laughs> let alone someone who's famous because you know, there's going to be a story that pops up on, you know, the post Whoopi Goldberg, you know, <laughs> drops yeah, massive just... deuce and, and uh, everyone in the whole production company smelling. I mean, everything turns into a news story these days. True. True. Uh, Dax, the number one story of the week. It's a scary one. Uh, Taylor Swift canceling three Austria concert tours. Uh, after two suspects were arrested for allegedly plotting a terror attack on the venue. Uh, like you said, very, very scary. Uh, thank God the cops saw what was going on and were able to intervene. Um, I know a lot of her fans are very upset that she did not get to do this stop because there was an August 8th, 9th, and 10th uh, performances that were supposed to go on there, and she canceled all, all of them. Uh, but basically what happened was she was due to perform at the Ernest Hoppel Station, I guess is how you'd say it. Um, but now the security measures, and there were already security measures for the show uh, that were to be stepped up before its cancellation. Uh, but they basically realized that there were a couple of suspects who allegedly radicalized themselves online, were planning to target the uh, the Vienna uh, location. And, uh, and that's when cops stepped in and told Taylor, like, sorry, this is too dangerous. Their plans are too detailed. Not only that, finding out that one of them actually started working at the venue days before to basically put himself in a position to to do this attack. Uh, but a bomb squad reportedly found chemical substances after raiding the home, and uh, they're now being evaluated to see if they could make a bomb. Um, but what it was was that it sounds like they wanted to drive their like a car through the crowd and then set off a bomb. And if you know anything about Taylor Swift concerts, uh, you know, there's thousands of people inside, but on that there's thousands of people outside because people that couldn't afford to get in will just go to the stadium, set up camp outside. And so there's normally thousands and thousands of people just listening to the concert. So imagine someone taking a, a car or a truck and just going through the crowd and then setting off a bomb after that. I mean, this could have been uh, devastating with the amount of people that were killed or injured. Thank God they found it. But apparently these teens had pledged an oath of alliance to ISIS early in July. um, And that police say that confirmed that they were aware of these, um, the actions or this potential attack. So, um, yeah, finding out slowly more and more details. Cops allegedly found counterfeit cash and a blue police light for his car to get better access to the arenas, uh, the surrounding area in the arena. arena. CNN says he planned to kill himself during the attack, either during a standoff with police or using the explosion. And that's the 19-year-old 
who had also quit his job back in June, changed his appearance, and were telling people around him he had something big planned. And then the 17-year-old, who was a suspect, broke up with his girlfriend recently, possibly triggering a something that sent him down this path. Uh, either way, very, very happy that the cops were able to intervene because I, I just couldn't imagine the headlines coming out of this. Yeah, I mean, scary situation. And uh, so the concert is still on, correct? No. No, no. I, oh, I thought they, retra- they, they brought they were bringing it back. I guess another country they're going to redo it because she canceled some dates. But yeah, um, yeah I, I think she's doing the right thing. Cancel and just to make sure. You have to. Down. Like, this was I, actually, too big think, of a plot. Yeah, there was another. I think there was a celebrity. I think it was Nikki Glazer who was like flying out to Europe for the concert. And oh, now really? it's like, I mean, crazy. I and mean, there was, like, by the way, there was a 15 year old who was also a part of this who was detained. Uh, but it sounds like the 15 year old was detained, but they don't know much, may not have known much about the plot or played an active part. So it was technically three people, but two of them are the ones that the cops really are focused on. Yeah, scary situation. And did Glad. you see the did you see the photo of the nineteen year old holding up like a machete and a knife? He's the alleged suspect. It is so scary looking to see that this guy, you know, potentially wanted to kill a lot of people. Oh man. Uh, if you're a performer, especially like do like a Taylor Swift level, security like the tickets are gonna get more and more expensive because you have to afford the security now for these shows and that's it stinks it stinks that that's yeah. what it is oh my god a giant spider just walked up on my desk where the hell did that come from uh, hold on it's so big and disgusting i need to i need to dispose of it one second oh god <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right sorry did you get it yeah it was huge i don't i don't know where it came from now do you okay. eat it or do you just throw it in what was it <laughs> you recycle or <laughs> It was one of those moments where it then, like, kept moving and freaked me out a little bit. Well, Dax, um, here's the thing. We're live on the podcast right now. Do you want to do it to make a viral clip? Do you eat the spider just to show everyone that you're a real man? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Dax, you're a man. Good for you. Eat a non-kosher spider at home. I like it. I, I get it. All right. We got uh, it. All right. This. That is our raw rundown, the top 10 stories of the week. Thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on Red Coral, they have a they just help us out a lot. They're a good team to work with, Red Coral. Uh, also, if you want to watch on YouTube, we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We're on it all. Check out our private Facebook group, our private Facebook group called Off the Record. You should be in it because it's a really fun community. Follow me at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holtz. I'll see you next time. Bye. Guys, hope you liked that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best thing you do support us is really doing that. And uh, we really need the money because we, we need hair gel. <laughs>